Oh, it's four in the morning. It's a horrible idea. Horrible idea. We're using Q-tips. Yeah, fresh paint or both <laughs> Q-tips. This is gonna look like absolute crap in the daylight. Yeah. I'm Stephanie, and this is Travis. Together we bought a Hunter 42 Passage that we call Gypsy. We sold almost everything that we owned and moved aboard. After living on Gypsy through a Toronto winter, we decided that we had to get down south. Though we've got very little sailing experience, we decided to leave it all behind in our home country Canada to live out our dream in sailing the world. We're so pumped to share this adventure of a lifetime. Our plan was to paint this evening so that we would have the 12 hours before they put us back in the water tomorrow morning, first thing. And of course, it has to start raining, like all evening. As soon as the sun was going down, it started to rain. And then we thought it let up a bit, so we started wiping everything down to avoid as much drippage down onto the hull as possible. And then it starts raining again. So, I don't know. We told them that we were gonna paint and be ready to go first thing, 8.30 in the morning. We're gonna wait it out, and I don't care. Like, if we have to hand dry this boat, and I don't care what time, we're painting in the middle of the night, I don't care. Hopefully this rain stops. Does it stop raining? No. And it's supposed to rain most of the night. And the rest of the freaking week. We're not staying here. No, so what, I realize what we can do though, so worst case scenario, if it rains all night, we can't dry it, we can't put it on tonight. We're gonna put it on tomorrow when it's dry because it's not gonna rain all day tomorrow. And if it's over 12 hours, it's not gonna be the end of the world. And then we can, it can rain that night, it can do whatever it wants. And then we'll just get put back in the next day. We should have painted it, I should have thought of that today. Right when we were like, left the office, we should have said, okay, and we should have just painted it. Because if it got wet, it wouldn't have mattered by now. And if it's over 12 hours, like, I don't think it's crit like end of the world. We planned for 14 days and it's been eight. So that's pretty good. I don't care. I'm done. It's pretty good. I've been hustling. So. Now you're done, but it's more I'm going to a hotel. Sure. There? Are you going to pay? We're going to paint. It is 10.45 and it's finally stopped raining and I think that this is the best window that we'll have. Yeah, I gotta do three coats. I'll come help. In about an hour, an hour and a half in between coats. So it's gonna be a late night. Pretty much just read the can wrong. Like a couple of dumb bummers. I'm worried when I move the back two stands that that's going to sink down even more. This paint is like super thick. Like I shook it for like 10 minutes last time. We still end up with like a chunk of like hard paint on the bottom, like really clay. So I ripped an old paintbrush, like a smaller paint roller off of the handle and it came to work. Is it gonna be a mess? Yeah, that's how thick it is in there. Oh, there it is. Yes. Oh, that's how thick it was. That, that it was like a piece of clay in there. It's impossible to shake. Now look at that.
one in the morning. This is gonna look like absolute crap in the daylight. Yeah. The blue and the black. It's a horrible idea. Horrible idea. Because like you just see the blue peeking through because it's uneven. Like unless if you're slapping a bunch like thick coats, I think we'll be able to see through. Yeah, I don't know where we went wrong. <laughs> Maybe. But we're now painting 42 foot boat with four inch rollers. <laughs> I was like, yeah, we only need one roller. <laughs> yeah, because Travis is gonna do the entire yeah, freaking like, boat. Take me half an hour to rip through this, no problem. Our freaking roller sucked up too much paint instantly and in like it was done after the first half a can of paint. Can't, you need to be efficient. So all so we now have now we're using Q-tips. Yeah, fresh paint are both <laughs> Q-tips. It's four in the morning. I should have went to bed. I'm gonna tell you, I'll never forget the first time we painted the bottom of a boat. Yeah. Oh, each layer will take half an hour. Two yeah. hours later, struggling with a four inch yeah. roller. Fortunately, we had an eight pack of these four inch rollers that worked beautifully to finish the rest of the second coat. The larger rollers we had were a different brand and just didn't work well for us. Itchy! I'm so itchy! If you don't get out of here, I'm gonna get bitchy! Tired. Tired. Super itchy. This is what you get for not wearing proper PPE. <laughs> Paige just give me a rash. Does it look like uh, crap outside? Cool. Oh, that's pretty good. Really? Yeah, once we do our last uh, like layer like we talked about, just like the um, two feet down from waterline, I think it'll look really good. Oh. Okay. Makes it a little bit more worth it from all that time we spent. <laughs> it really is a small window of time where you feel clean. Nothing beats getting into old, sweaty, dirty clothes that you wore for the last 24 hours, first thing in the morning. So I'm just gonna go outside and check out what the paint job looks like. My first time taking a look at what the six hours resulted in from last night's misery. <laughs> the uh, marina people, they came knocking at like 8.15. They're like, ah, oh, no, unfortunately, paint's not ready. Felt bad, but told the receptionist that, yeah, unfortunately the rain held us up and we couldn't get painting when we um, were hoping to get started. And she's like, oh, it happens all the time. You're good. So I imagine, I mean, boat things always take a lot longer than you think they're going to take. So it's nothing new to them. Okay, so let's see. Okay. That's not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. There are some spots that look, I guess, a little like metallic-y blue because the blue is peeking out a little bit. But that's what we're gonna finish up today by just um, putting some extra coats on there in daylight with visibility. But all in all, not as bad as I anticipated. So once we go over that, I think it'll be, it'll be decent. Hey, it's not that bad, eh? There's some parts that we need to go over, but that's what we expected. I was just expecting like patch here, patch there, yeah, patch. glue here, bear hole there. That's not bad. kept digging this thing out. Although it's pretty much the worst ground to dig out. Yeah, each day we just kind of sink lower and lower. We have. It's like <laughs> three inches lower than what it was. Yeah. You've already dug it out a couple of times, so we yeah. sinking. Let's check out the other side here. I'd say our starboard side looks a little bit better. We had like fresh rollers on this side to start with. And then once we got to the port side, our rollers started to not absorb any paint and it made it harder to apply, so. The only thing that was nice about working in the dark was that it was cool, because now it's only like 9 a.m. and it's scorching, so. Hopefully it doesn't rain today. It doesn't even really look like it's going to, but you never know. There are a lot of clouds 
in the sky today. So what happened last night was that we were all ready to paint and we had decided to paint in the evening. The boat needs to be launched 12 hours after the last coat of paint to allow for 12 hours of drying time. So we're like, okay, we have to get put in the water first thing in the morning. We're gonna paint late at night and then it starts raining. Then we reread the directions on the can of paint and it was actually a minimum launch time of 12 hours. So we could have launched whatever. We could have painted the boat oh, yeah. two days ago. We were under the assumption that it needed to go in the water a certain time after because I thought it was more of a wet paint. Our last paint, I just remember the old owner talking about that. Bottom coat that we had, XXX, you have to launch within 24 hours of application. With, yeah, you have to be in the water. So I was like, oh, this is a much better paint, so it's probably got to be in 12 hours. No. Overworked, not reading the labels properly. So many projects, the heat, the fatigue. We just, improperness, but. So we started painting really late last night at about 11 p.m. We made the decision to paint because we checked the weather. And I mean, checking the weather, it's, you never really know when it's gonna rain, but it really did save the full week. There was gonna be a lot of rain. And we encountered more rain last night than we have since we've been here all week. Yeah. So we just figured if there's no maximum on when we need to launch by, then we might as well just paint it when we have a window of dry weather so that we don't get stuck with getting rained out again. Yeah, because it said it was supposed to be raining most of today and tomorrow and the next said the, the least percentage of rain was after the big rainstorm last night, which led us to, yeah, 11 o'clock at night. Yeah, so we're just like, let's just go and <laughs> get what just... we can on, so at least there's paint on now, and we're not yeah. trying to push back scheduling getting launched in. It sucked. It was like six <laughs> hours. Six oh. hours after already a long, sweaty, hot day of working. Yeah. Just add that on top of the night. Well, at least we woke up this morning and we got two coats on the bottom. Now we just gotta finish off, have a can. At least we'll be good to go when they're ready and we know that now our paint will be dry and we don't have yeah. to be rushed to be put back in the water within a certain number of hours and we can just go in. I mean, the sooner the better because we do want to get out of here, but at least the paint will be done and we'll be ready. Get back to boat life. Oh, right. This is boat life. Working on your boat. <laughs> yeah. Okay, back to work. That visibility. Yeah. Oh, that's how you can see black painting on black. Our take on getting two colors for the bottom paint. The manager at the marine store had suggested getting multiple colors to alternate so that you could see the wearing of the bottom paint easier. The suggestion was getting four cans so that we could apply, say, a red, black, red, black. Our plan was to do a layer in blue and two layers in black, so we got one gallon of blue paint and two gallons of black paint. We actually ran out of blue paint during the first layer when our rollers started to flatten out and lose absorption of paint, which led to waste of product. We only got 75% of the hull done with blue and had to complete the rest of the first layer with black. In theory, multiple layers sounded like a good idea, but alternating between different colors on different layers could end poorly if you don't have enough paint to complete a layer or to sufficiently cover the previous layer. Next time, we'd stick with getting just one color. The best way to tell when our bottom paint is wearing is that it stops working as well. And we don't need different colors to tell us that. Fortunately, we had enough paint, just uh, enough to do little touch-ups left over, and we got some significant coverage. I would say we got... Yeah, I think we did good. How many coats do we have on... Two coats on the whole haul. We have three coats three feet below the waterline. We have four coats on the front edge of the boat. We have three coats on the keel, and four to five coats on the leading edge of the keel. And we got four to five coats on the rudder. Because those are the spots that take the most wear. They're cutting through the water and the rudder's always, you know, turning through the water. So you're going to get a lot of wear on that. And the keel you were saying was um, more difficult to clean, like holding your breath. We wanted a lot on the keel because obviously it's the deepest point and to hold your breath to go down and clean the keel sucks. So 
I would like to have had four coats right here on the back side because this this usually gets pretty bad too, but we don't have enough paint. But I think we did pretty good. It's just too hot to wear those hazmat suits though. Like it's crazy, but stuff is toxic. So yeah. safety first. Well, I could count like the amount of gallons of paint I've had on myself over the years of me doing stupid things, like just painting with nothing on. This is the worst paint to get on yourself. Like, if I don't know if you can see that, but like, I'm fully rashed. Right in here is all rashed on both sides of my arm. Same with Steph under her neck, it's all rashed. It's not as bad, but it just it, sprays everywhere. Yeah, and it doesn't come off like normal paint. You can't just wash it off. Just like pick at it and like yeah. scrape it off. It's like but we should have worn hazmat suits, Travis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things. You live and you learn. Well, well no way. better for next time for sure to do this. Just pay somebody. <laughs> no way. I'm just kidding. Gosh, we always do things ourselves. We just need to have the proper tools yeah. for the job. Totally. That Absolutely. just helps so much. It makes your life way easier. Yeah. It's also quite awkward of positioning here under the boat because we're squatted and we can't really put our knees on this yeah. gravel. It just kills. Knees so. are shot, back shot. Yeah, neck is shot. It ain't comfortable, but I guess we saved a few thousand dollars in doing it ourselves, so. That's what we gotta do to make this dream happen. Yeah. Suffer. <laughs> well, what do they say? Like, it's boat life. It's 90% work. Working in tropical destinations and yeah. 10% relaxing. relaxing on the beach. Yeah. But wouldn't trade it for anything. It's awesome. Yeah. Okay, let's clean up. Rip off the tape and then we'll yeah, clean up. Let's do that. And then I just gotta, I, I gotta push that back up. It's, it's starting to drizzle a little bit now. We just beat the rain. Oh yeah. Oh. See, the gray doesn't look too bad now that I'm looking at it. It actually looks great. So far, this side, you did a really good job on the taping. Thank there's you. no like, in, there's no difference yeah. in a line. It's, it's straight. When you got it, you got it. <laughs> Paint's done, we're ready to go back in the water. Good job. Good job. <laughs> Couple yeah. of uh, loungy beer days are coming up for me, I'll tell you that. Ice cream, ice cream's in my future. <laughs> it's our first time living on the boat in the yard because obviously like we've worked on the boat before when we were in Port Credit before. Well, right before we bought it. Yeah, right yeah. before we bought it, we worked on the boat. And that's because the previous owner was kind enough to let us get a head start on working on the boat when the sale was pending for months. Yeah. Yeah. That was a unique situation. Sale couldn't be finalized until we got a new mast because there was an issue that we found last minute. So anyways, we worked on the boat day in and day out, summertime. It was actually two years ago to this day. Yesterday and today we were working. I had videos of it and I was like, oh, look at that. Same day. It's hot in Toronto and it's humid, but it's different when you can't go back to your condo and get air conditioning. Yeah, go back to your comfy bed. It's far and different. Air conditioning and <laughs> like not having to make food and sweat your buckets off when yeah. you're trying to just get dinner and after get your long day. Eaten alive, like while you're working outside and then while you're sleeping. I think we did learn a lot. Oh yeah, I think we did pretty good preparing because there's no like real easy place to go to get anything. So we yeah. wanted to make sure we had everything for the amount of jobs we we're going to do. Because we're a good half hour drive away from a grocery store or a marine store. So yeah. we tried to prepare as well as we could. We're ready to go back in the water. 
Got a couple of things just to clean up and wrap up here for the rest of the day, and then we should be good to go tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> I got nothing to say. I'm wiped. I know, me too. <laughs> I, just, yeah. I just want to lie down for a minute. I think we're going to make a drink, have something to eat, oh, and then just get our last little things done. And Okay, bye, Travis. <laughs> He's gone. <laughs> The next time you see us, we will be in the water. Thanks for watching. Splash Day is up next, and hopefully for real this time. We appreciate your support of our channel by giving us a thumbs up, subscribing, and continuing to follow our journey. See you next Friday. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this week's episode. You guys know that a big challenge for us living on the hard was that we had zero airflow in the boat, and it just got insanely hot. So this made cooking meals a challenge as well. Prepping and planning quick snacks and meals was key in limiting the amount of time we spent below deck cooking and just heating up the place even more. But if you don't know where to start in the galley, Skillshare's got some great classes worth checking out. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators. You can explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and with thousands of inspiring classes being offered, you can get lost in creativity. There are classes in fine art, crafts, culinary, lifestyle, video, photography, productivity, and many more. The class I'm currently taking is Julie Yoon's Kitchen Confidence, practical tips for cooking with intuition. What I've enjoyed about her class is that she mentioned some key factors that play a role in cooking with what you have, which is pretty important when it comes to liveaboard life. So for example, taking an inventory of the ingredients that you have on hand can play a part on what type of cuisine you're gonna be cooking and recipes. Or say that you forgot about a particular ingredient that got shoved way in the back of the pantry or the cabinet. Once you see it, it might spark new ideas and new recipes. Geared specifically for learning so there are no ads and you can stay focused. They're also always launching new premium classes, allowing you to follow wherever your creativity takes you. Right now, it is a great time to check out Skillshare because they are offering the first 1,000 of our subscribers who use the link in the description box below a one-month free trial to Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today.